Well, I mean, it is the first time. Let's see. A lot of stuff. Um, true, true. Okay. So, yes, we'll begin. Um, all right. I'm Van or Vanessa, and uh, I have a co host. Do you want to introduce yourself? Um, I'm Heinen. Uh, I can make a joke, but right now I'm not sure how how kid friendly we want this to be yet. So I'm going to refrain from anything. To oh, I uh, I mean I, I cuss all the time, so like make make the joke, I guess. Um, I am shit. Now that I'm out, now that I'm on the spotlight, I lost the joke. Um, let's, Oops. But let, let's just say um, my immediate thought coming into this was. Pretty much recreating the tune from Ninja from Ninja Rap the entire time, but the more I researched, the more that seems like it would just be very terrible given how much I've learned over the last couple of uh, hours. Oh, gotcha. Yes, I forgot that Vanilla Ice did Ninja Rap. Oh my gosh, that that's a total yeah. blast from the past. Oh my. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Well, it turns out like that's literally just not just the tip of the iceberg, but also a very just unusual like just is this a stepping stone in just the labyrinth of sh stuff that's happened to Vanilla Ice, aka uh, Rob Van Winkle? So Rob Van Winkle, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's... I just realized something. Uh, how do I get the video from this? Um. I mean, I think I'm recording, so okay. Okay. I think I'm recording from my end, so I should be able to send it to you. Okay. Okay. Just otherwise, to... I'll, yeah. I'll, if, if it doesn't go through, I'll figure something out. Okay. I mean, I think I might be able to download it off of Facebook. Oh, I don't know. I, I we'll figure so. it out. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll figure it yeah, yeah. out. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um. Yes. So. Ah. Uh, geez. There's so much with that. Uh, where I wanted to start, though, was kind of what I talked to you about early on, where it was like, okay, Vanilla Ice was definitely this point in my life where, like, I had a bunch of friends, and they were, like, different friend groups. I was, like, seven, eight. Uh, yeah. It was probably seven. And I um, had these friend groups and uh they you know always be like oh it's this thing it's this thing this is the next thing and they were really into vanilla ice for however long he he was you know the the on yeah. playing on the radio and when i found this like single like tape and like actually cassette tape that said like oh here's this like other song that he did i like brought it to my friends and i was like cool look at this it's from vanilla ice and they were like yeah vanilla ice is like passe and like he's not cool anymore and i was just like okay you know what i don't want to be cool anymore i i'm deciding now i don't want to fit in i don't want to have everyone tell me well you can't do this and you can't do that and you can't like that person so like i just was like i'm i'm out I'm not keeping up with this shit anymore. I think I went like total rogue. Well, like as rogue as like a seven-year-old can. So like I I'm not gonna play in the sandbox with you kids anymore. I'm just gonna go into my own corner and pretend like I'm I'm rat trap and dino bot. Right, right. No, like I went I was like, fuck it, I'm just gonna listen to country. And so like I listened to like Billy Ray Cyrus, and that was my thing. Like, I was just like, whatever the country radio station is playing, I'm, like, listening to that. Which, like, I mean, also there's pop country music. It just didn't dawn on me. I was like, I can wear whatever I want. Like, I'm I'm good with being a cowgirl right now. And, like, you know, I guess, every, every, I, I mean, maybe I had a delayed, like, um, what do you call it? Um, maybe I had a delayed, um, what is that called? Uh, like how, like, um, like horse girl, like time in my life, but like that, that was it for how, however long that lasted. Yeah. I don't think that was just you. I think a lot of us had those moments. Um, unfortunately for me, it was never really horse. I though I did ride a horse, um, mm -hmm. for the previous time, but that, that wasn't really my fantasy. My fantasy kind of like 
switched between taping whatever things I could put to a car and then to, hey, I want to be a newspaper man and then all that other stuff. But in terms of what we're talking about, I would say uh, the first time I heard Vanilla Ice probably was... I mean, it has to be Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2. That was like, like I didn't even know who he was, for the most part, yeah. um, which I, I was kind of weird because developmentally I was kind of slower than most. So mm-hmm. I never really got too big into music, but I had that same experience you're talking about. Um, mostly, uh, it was mostly with Transformers, to be honest. Like. Um, at one point transformers was like the coolest thing ever like in kindergarten and like everyone had like you know i think it was like the headmasters at that point around the 90s but and then everyone just said oh no around the time i got into beast wars everyone was like no it's not cool anymore but then i was oh, just no. like yeah well too You're bad like, I'm, gonna I'm gonna do my thing yeah it. Yeah. And then it turns out that that show has lasted longer than anything else that anyone I'm aware of has <laughs> watched. So, well, except for a few other things, but those are like very niche. Oh, I would yeah. say for music, though, uh, I was I was very into like R and B stuff, but that was mostly because I was on like I think the kids the station that most kids were into, which was like Kiss ninety five point seven in Connecticut. Which, I mean, it had some. Um, R&B and everything. Um, I don't think it ever really had been realized unless I'm like really losing my memory, which is distinctly possible given that was close to like, oh God, it's 30 years. Uh, <laughs> this is what happens when you're in isolation, you know, and with COVID. Yeah. Two separate things for me. Um, <laughs> but yeah. I would say with music, there was the distinct feeling like everyone else was in this like loop of their own cool thing of uh what was it back in the day it was it was definitely pop like um and the little sphere that i was in it was definitely pop based um oh, gotcha. you know backstreet boys and sync and all that yeah i was gonna say like tell tell me which, which time and then i'm like okay so like 1998 99 yeah, right. I, I would think yeah. De- developmentally that's when I really got into music. That said, mm-hmm. I did listen to like in my early time, like I can remember listening to certain things in Vanilla mm-hmm. Ice, but it just really didn't, you know, it didn't agree with me, unfortunately. But oh, as yeah. I was like looking stuff up for Vanilla Ice as an adult, I'm like, oh god, this is insanely good. Like, oh my gosh, of heavier stuff is just insanely good now. Like he had, a, he has a heavy metal version, uh, not heavy metal, but like a very over, like a hardcore version of the Ninja Rap, as well as the album that he made, basically from what he could called therapy, where he let loose every single mm. demon that he ever had, and that was with the producer from Corn, which was nuts. Oh, gotcha. Oh, it. interesting. Yeah. Yeah. But, I, I. I just find it interesting that he like had this stage name. And so like everyone was kind of like, it's vanilla ice. Um, And then like uh, around 1998, 99, um, I was working at my mom's company and, um, or at a company where my mom was also working. And there was a woman who grew up with Rob Van Winkle. And she was like, well, I mean, what do you say at that point? You know, like, that's just Rob. And I was like, so mystified by that. Just like, what? You just, you just grew up with, you went to high school with this guy who's like, who was super famous. Like, oh my God. But like, like, man, did Vanilla Ice have, he had some demons and he had a lot of shit. And then like, I think he lost most of his like money. Um, actually, no. So, oh, okay. This is where I can like I, I feel like I'm I'm good on the counterpoint though because all I did was look this stuff up, mm-hmm. took, which I feel better about now. Um, Yay. apparently <laughs> Rob Van Winkle kept most of his money because okay. he because believe it or not, like looking at interviews of his, he's very intelligent, very eloquent, yes. yeah, and very put together. But he's also very fearless, and I think yeah. that's the thing. And I think what probably set off a lot of this is kind of what happened with most celebrities probably going forward until very recently which is they brought them up and then smashed them down as fast as possible 
And oh, I think gotcha. The, well, yep. Like it's the I think it's the two lawsuits that I where I thought that he lost all of his money because like of uh, Queen oh, suing yeah. him for the baseline, right? And then um yeah. the uh the other guy like whoever did play that funky music, like those oh, yeah. two Yeah, like going after him and being like and but I mean that also set the stage for like today, you know, for TikTok. You know, like you can use 30 seconds of a song as long as, you know, like, yeah. You know, you, you, as long as you parody it or something like that. And it, right. it's, yeah. it's very different because the thing is sampling, which is this I found extremely fascinating. Here's mm -hmm. the reason that the sampling yeah. um, department, I think, of like the communications bureau was established. Because mm -hmm. no one else was being sued for this. Every rapper, yeah. as far as I can tell, was not charged for what everyone else was doing because as far as i'm aware puff daddy right. was doing it beforehand um uh a lot of um deaf little records was doing it the problem is yeah he was making a lot of money yeah and they just they, the thing is though I, as far as i'm aware i don't think he won as far as i've been told he did win the lawsuit but the thing is okay. and this is the part that i get really just tilts my head is he bought the rights to not only his own song for ISSB, he bought the rights to Under Pressure as well, so he holds the rights to both songs. <laughs> Can't sue himself. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. He owns the rights to both of them, so now there's no issues there. He did yeah. pay the money. And the yeah. thing is, like, he, as far as I can tell, he's very like, he's, he hasn't lost any of his money. And in fact, I don't even think he had a period where he did become oh, gotcha. broke. I think what happened was he did get into a very depressive point and that was mostly because his producers just they tanked him and mm -hmm. i mean they 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 pretty much as far as i can tell used him to try and like they uh, the best way i can put it is they try to make him child friendly oh they, i mean yeah. there were some kids you know because i mean with ninja rap and with um with ice ice baby like it's really they're really catchy you know and yeah. like you don't even think like um about it and like it like even the kind of like word to your mother you know type of thing it's like yeah. this very um it's playful you know yes. and like i don't know if there were there, there didn't seem to be a lot of other rappers at that time like yeah, going toward you know, kind of that playfulness. Yeah. Right. And that was by design, I think, from originally, because they wanted to make him more marketable. Mm, but yeah. if you really, if you look at the lyrics to Ice Ice Baby, and this is something Rob Van Winkle said personally, it's a very lewd and just violent song. It's about life in, uh, I think it was like, it was either Florida or like it was a life on the street. Oh yeah, because he grew up in Florida. Yeah, right. It, it was about yeah. like guns and violence and everything. Like it was a. Like, it's a no, song I've never about up like, the lyrics. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, it's also like in slang, so a lot of it just kind of. But he talk about oh, gotcha. a lot of the lyrics. He's talking about like, like wielding shotguns and pistols and 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 snorting coke and everything. And and this was a song sung by children well at least i think most people just usually go for like the ice ice beat but they don't look at the actual right. like lyrical content and like actually like dissect it and if you do it's he was talking about his life like that's a very interesting thing about um vanilla ice is that he was very into poetry and he and it comes through in a lot of his songs if you look at it is that he you can imagine that yeah yeah, he's he's a very um, poetic person when it comes to writing everything, and he feels very personal about it. And I think he took it personally at the point when this label basically they released a, a autobiography without his consent or his approval. Oof. And the fact is that I think if I remember right, and, and he may have only heard about it at the um, Arsenio Hall interview that he did. Where he was basically confronted by, it and what was he supposed to do at that point? Right. I, think, I mean, that interview was pretty much the base, like I think, the starting point of where he just got destroyed at that point. And I do remember yeah, that Arsenio yeah. um, uh, interview. Mm. <laughs> it was it was not favorable to him. Hmm. So I would imagine that. Yeah, that's really interesting. Um, you know, like there was someone who. Um, oh no, I think it was a meme that was like. Um, like whenever you hear stop collaborate and listen and i'm like 
I don't remember these lyrics at all. And like, it's been so long since I've actually heard the song that I'm like, I don't actually know. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, and the thing is, if you look, listen back to it, it, it is a, like, he does, he has a lot of strength when it comes to songwriting and performing. Mm-hmm. And I think that was the main draw is that when he was in clubs, he was, a, he was a risk taker and he really just put everything into his art and it shows. And yeah, but the thing, and then, but, yeah, and then got got beat down by fame, of course, because I mean, at some point, that's what happens. Well, it's mostly the interviews and everything, and I think that's like emblematic of just the public in general. And it's the same thing that's happened to Britney Spears. It's happened to Michael Jackson. It's happened to uh, Amanda Bynes. Like any celebrity that has like been, you know, risen to the top. They the, the only thing they love is a rising star is a falling star. Oh and yeah, oh, they man. just wanted to make press yeah. off of it. Yeah, and I think that's the main problem is just this model. I don't know if it started with Bob Van Winkle and Vanilla Ice, but it certainly seems like the archetype was set up for him in that point. Oh, gotcha. I would imagine actually it probably goes back to some of the early, um, what is that called? Like uh, people who rose to fame, like uh, like Elvis or something, where it's like, oh, yeah, you absolutely. Know, like he rose to fame it was like at this time when like tv started coming around like and now there's i mean of course the the new uh movie about his life but i'm just like oh you know it was probably that i mean it could have been like it could be like there's i feel like there's always a trace of like all of these like things where it's like and this person was popular and then they really weren't and then this pro- person was popular and then they were really weren't you know and it's, it's like the fame got to them yeah. yeah, it's mostly a switch, I think, and partially it's. It, it, I don't. I'm not going to blame the public entirely, and I'm not going to blame mm-hmm. the artist entirely because obviously right. it's not that simple. There's and it, multiple... it's yeah, it's very complex. And like, uh, actually, what I tell people is like, if I ever become famous, I'm going to be mean, and like yeah. they're like, what, like why would you? And I'm like, I already know. Like I already know myself. I'm going to like walk out of my house and be like, get the fuck out of my face, you know, um, because I'm going to be like, I can't go anywhere because like fucking paparazzi is outside. Like it would piss me at like, I like to be in my house, but I'm not going to like being in my house that much that I can't, you know, like I would just be mean, you know, yeah. like they're just, yep. That's I mean, and that's why fame. it's not going to happen, but yeah. I mean, that's, that's the idea with fame is that, and I think, believe it or not like in the interviews that i've looked up robin winkle said it best where it's like they'll they'll chew you up and spit you out and Mm -hmm. and he said in multiple interviews fame is fleeting and you have to you know if you live through the experience it is going to destroy you so and he's taking it the best even though he's i mean he's gone through like i mean he went into a drug overdose at at one point Mm -hmm. and then bounced back and basically just took life took by the haunches and took took his life in, in control again took yeah. away from the record producers and everything and now he's playing smaller shows right and, and, and i was gonna say that. and he's doing like um reality tv where it's like um it like he's like oh you know what i kind of wanted to know about the amish so you know it's like you know i don't know which name he's going by now but like you know it's rob van winkle um, I think and he's the amish both. i think he's using okay. both he's using both rob van winkle and vanilla ice i think he's also using vanilla ice just because it's it's marketable yeah, and in yeah. those times he's just sung his song i think um it was what was that reality show he was on vh1 where he was with uh it was, god what was that porn star's I name i know the uh, other one is like the remodeling show that he did that he was like he's oh yeah stuff yeah well that's how he got most of his money now is just remodeling oh, houses i mean despite despite you know how H, how you know wh- wh- I don't know what the name of the network is, but H- like he made, he made yeah. Yeah, thank you, he made yeah. a bunch of his money on that as well as you know holding the, the rights to the records and everything, and he knows what he's doing obviously because yeah. he's making a ton of money, he owns two houses and cars, he's doing something right is all I'm gonna say. Yeah, yeah, uh, and like he's he's not trying to be like oh I'm still like um like. Be, like getting money off the nostalgia like he's like no 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 i can flip houses like let me show you i can flip houses watch me you know Not like that also motocross oh yeah mm, yeah <laughs> motocross, like, jet I mean, forgot. yeah all of these things that just yeah but yeah like i know I, I agree with you and the thing is like my childhood i would say 
I would I wouldn't say I was into vanilla ice, mm -hmm. mostly because I just I was one of those odd kids that just couldn't really like click into one thing or another. But gotcha. Growing up into it now, like I still don't like his early work, but I can see his later work definitely appealing to me. Which is funny because I'm like he's also very into like the insane clown posse um groups and everything but like the underground music yeah like like yeah. he's worked a bunch of of uh, like he actually performed with insane clown posse as well as a bunch of other um underground groups and still does to this day and hmm. i just it's amazing to me that he's just found this niche and he just really just rides into it and i think it's like inspiring to a to a point that he still oh, remains yeah. an artist in that oh. little niche as opposed to just trying to sell out to everything yeah i mean i feel like he kind of like had that moment and was like i hate all of this never mind i'm gonna you know go my own way do my own thing yeah well i would, I would say that, that that's emblematic of like a very good story coming out of hollywood despite everything you know it, it's definitely difficult oh, to yeah. hear what he went through but it's uplifting that he survived it and also thrived away from all that and definitely right. doesn't shy away from how toxic the environment can be for someone like him who is right. i mean i would say very empathetic and very like intelligent despite i mean yeah. being a high school dropout <laughs> so Jeez, yeah. i mean it's definitely something well, that like, the, the, i think that also parallels can be made with um like eminem where like i listen to like the lyrics sometimes and i'm like damn that is so good like just mm. the way like he um forms like what do you call it different just just some of his lyrics i'm like wow that's just amazing well yeah, yeah this word poetry is is a big part yeah. of it and i think um, oh yeah partially um it, um vanilla ice opened up the way to it and the thing is it opened up to a lot more because there's a very thriving um um asian rap scene coming out of it um i don't know if you're familiar with filthy frank or um the, um george miller is the guy who made filthy frank but like he brought up a lot of how asian culture is getting into the rap scene now and bringing that over i think that's partially to do with how much it's become mainstream through like vanilla ice and other artists you know mm. banking on that and i think he still owned like the largest rap like um, rap album to date which i think it was like 160 million cop um, um album sold which is still yeah. impressive and he's and i think even recently he's still getting royalties from that so it's something to say that that song still carries weight no matter how much time comes between you know then and now and how, how much yeah. baggage comes with it is just he made a mark and i think that's something to look I, forward to. i mean like a lot of marks and like a lot of like ripples too you know which is like one of those like just amazing like it's like oh yes now now there's this thing oh wow <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah and and i think that's something that and this is something he brought up which i think is absolutely interesting and that music creates the 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 generation and like we're going to be talking about with like the 90s and everything yeah. he calls it the last great generation like decade because mm. between like the 2000s and 2017 there hasn't been really much that really sets the stage apart from technology. Oh, and the gotcha. thing is, music, yeah. yeah, musically, there's, because the thing is, you have to admit, music does make up the decade. It and, does. Yeah, it Ice, does. Ice yeah. Baby is part of it, but then you also have to remember there was stuff like the Spice Girls. Um, yeah, yeah and Britney really. Spears and the Backstreet Boys yeah. and Boys to Men, like, like all these things. New Kids on the Block. Um, yeah, New Kids, well, New Kids on the Block was late, nine, late 80s. Um, oh, I, okay. Yeah, um, that Sorry. that was one of those odd, odd things too. Like I felt like I was so young, um, and I remember like one of my friends, um, she had like the matching pillows and like the blankets and stuff, and I was like the the whole little set, and I was like, I know none of this. I I like I mean the yeah. Wahlbergs obviously came out of it, just kind of. Meh. Well, one yeah. Wahlberg brought the rest into it. he he he, he right. got his he, he made the uh, um, he made the sleigh that brought the other Wahlbergs into into prominence and and, right. and just like rode them into victory on Marky Mark and then the big hit. Yes, yeah, yeah. Which is it? It is one of those things where I'm like, um, what is it? 
Marky, Johnny, Joey, other guy. <laughs> Someone's mad at me right now. Someone's Andrew. Okay, you remember yeah. Palmer's night? Because I can I can remember Marky Mark, um, the guy with the grill, the guy who's in Saw, <laughs> and maybe there was one more in 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 entourage but that's about it like that's the extent oh, of my oh, of my right. marky mark yeah. knowledge yeah literally that's it and i've never even touched uh mark burgers or whatever like i know it's called wall burgers but wall I, burgers. I refuse, yeah yeah i refuse to give them any more money by saying their name so it's like oh gotcha yeah yeah <laughs> i also uh, just like like making fun of their names <laughs> Yeah. Uh, well, what I was thinking was like, um, so again, the nostalgia, you know, people are kind of like, oh, my God, is that they? you know, and like, um, right at the beginning, like right before the pandemic started, there were people who wanted to go on like a cruise that was with new kids on the block. And I was and someone else who was from that same time period. And I was like, yeah, yeah, cool. Um, yeah, you guys like go. <laughs> yeah, like, I, I mean, like, I could Okay, so I think it might have started with um, what was that movie? Um, now this is the end, or something like that, where they had like the Backstreet Boys at the end of the of the, of the movie singing in heaven. I think that might have been part of it that helped this oh, whole nostalgia gotcha. revolution. But I also believe like this kind of stuff is cyclical. Like everything comes back. It is. It is definitely. Yeah, I'm seeing the styles now, and I'm like, oh god, oh hold on, hold on. <laughs> yeah, you apparently, know, like, fanny, apparently fanny packs are coming back, which is. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, extent. right? Like, I feel like I do not want, like, I mean, I know that I had, oh my God, sorry, there's memories coming back. <laughs> well, I, I think that's what this, this show is hoping to do this, is bring back memories to a lot of people. Is. Yeah. Oh my God. I had a bright orange. Um, it looks like a fanny pack, but I put it on my wrist and it was yep, a coin purse. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah, I got three of those from a local amusement park, and I lost every single one of them. I I think I had that one tucked away in one of like my like I I uh whew, sorry. There's a lot of things that I don't talk about that I'm just like <sighs> okay. I grew up in kind of a big house, and I had a huge room. And so, like, I'm like, oh, yeah, that was one of those things in my closet, just kind of in, like, my, one of my, I would never do this again. This is an awful design, but one of my walls was my entire closet. Um, yeah. Just, yeah. I mean, fancy, fancy. Uh <laughs> no, I mean, I think a lot of kids tried that, so. I, I lived in, like, a three-story house on a quarter acre of land and everyone was like that is a castle and i'm like eh, i mean it's ours oh there's no but i don't think anyone's gonna shame you on that so i mean everyone <laughs> well, has like, their own i i want to i'm like let me clarify my parents bought it in 1992 for 80,000. it went for a million like two years ago so i'm like um that's the housing know? market Blame the housing bubble for that. Don't blame yeah. me. There's no one's going to blame me for that. And to be honest, like, unless you buy your own houses, like, there's no, look, yeah. I'm, I can't say much. I lived in a crappy apartment in a shitty part of my state. And then oh, no. from there, I, uh, what was it? I went from that to a giant hill that you could never get up, no matter how good they plowed, because <laughs> it, it's, it's, look, yeah. it's, it's New England and it snows like crazy. Yeah, you're going yeah. to be stuck at the bottom of the hill no matter what. And then from there, it was just eh, like you move on. You don't blame your parents. I, mean, oh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't blame my parents. It's just one of those things where I'm like, it's not like we had it good. I oh, mean, yeah. Like there were things. Go I got. Oh, sorry. There's no, no it's fine. I think it's yeah. just we're on the Internet. Yeah. People will look to us and be like. Oh, you guys are just like oh, hell, like don't judge us. We don't know. So <laughs> right, just right. Stop. I'm like, I well, I kind of I I mean, what I sorry, there there's a lot going on in my brain. This is what happens. It's okay. So I'm in, right there with you. In uh the in the therapy field, there are people who will be like, I don't want, like, I just want to work with people who are like not doing well, like not find, like not financially secure. Like I, you know, and like, yeah. luckily the Husky program is really great. 
it's for low income adults. Like they never be, like, I can't charge them. Like they don't pay anything. They come to their sessions when they yep. can. They're great. Um, but there are people who will be like, Oh no, like it's $300 for my session or nothing. Like I'm good, you know? And so like, there's a lot of like, obviously infighting about that. Uh, I know people who will be like, I never want to work with rich people. And it's like, well, I, from the outside, if you saw that house, if you saw, if you saw all of that property, if you saw, like, if you saw us, you'd be like, wow, that's a rich family. That is a family that has their shit together. I bet they're doing so great. And it's like, yep. fuck no. You know, my yeah. brother was like joined a gang. Like I was severely depressed. My dad was like cheating on my mom. Like there's all of these things that it's just like, it. I'm sure from the outside, we probably had the money to like go pay $300 per session. However, we had a lot of shit going on. And yep. like, I'm always like, listen, you guys, like, you don't understand, like, what it's like to, like, it, like, I have rich clients, like, I, I know what it's like to, you know, see someone who is devastated because of, like, gun violence and addiction yeah. and hoarding issues and sexual abuse and all of these things that I'm just, like, you, like, just because someone can be a multimillionaire and own 20 properties does not mean <laughs> that they are above experiencing what humans experience. And exactly. so like, I'm just kind of like realizing now it's because of that house, you know, it's because of this house <laughs> that like in this huge room that I had, like, you know, that yeah. I'm sure, like, I mean, I know that my friends were like, jealous of that house and like that they had difficulty sometimes just being like are you sure you didn't slay a dragon like going to that house you know and like all these things that they would say that like um and i know like because it's so prominent on this hill there's not there's it you yep. you could see it from the main street like you look up it's uh, it's on this hill you could see it like that people would drive by and like i remember my ex or He's a friend. He's a friend. Like he's a he's a longtime friend, obviously. Like this is like years and years ago. But like one of my friends, his ex-wife was like, That house is so beautiful. I wish to see it from the inside one day. And he was like, Yeah, wouldn't that be great? You know, because <laughs> he's like, uh, I'm not even gonna tell you that that's the you know friend who you don't like. Like, I don't want to say that that's her house, but like I've definitely been in that house. You know, um. yeah. Well, I think the one thing that we can all agree on is, and I think this comes back to the nice thing is that appearances are not always what they seem. Right. And the thing is, I will attest to that myself, given that, I mean, I lived not in a well off house at one point, but a very good house. And to be honest, mm -hmm. I was in a similar situation as you, where it's like, you know, I had family that was very depressive. And, you know, I won't get into too many details, obviously, because. I mean, we, don't, we don't we don't have hours right now right but the thing There's is i get time saying. for it <laughs> well plenty well plenty of episodes to get over get through both our individual like yeah. but the thing is i i sympathize completely with that sentiment i think a lot of people will because mm -hmm. again the house was this like the symbol of everything when it comes to like appearances is that oh here's this wonderful place you live in that says your your status and all this other stuff but it says nothing about the people inside and it never will. And that's always yeah. what I think people need to keep remembering. And I think this ties back to just everything in general is that mm -hmm. appearances do not make a single iota of what, what's happening inside someone's head. And the truth is, sure. yeah. rich, poor, and everyone, we're all depressed. And I think, if anything, the last couple of years have just gone and proved that, is that no matter how terrible the situation is, yeah, shit's, shit's fucked up. And we are all trying to deal with it at the same time. Now, yeah. obviously, there are some people that are more responsible for others. Hello, uh, people in power that I'm not going to oh, yeah. name because I think everyone on Facebook has whatever post they want on that. And to be truthfully honest, I don't care. I really don't. There's there's going to there's going to be everyone that has their story, and I'm just going to state that those people are responsible. But we have to deal with the people on the ground with the rest of us. And we need to be kind of civil, if nothing else, than to be able to just say, hey, can you help me out? I know we're assholes, but can we be not right. that can big of assholes for a moment? Nice. Yeah. 
Yeah. But yeah, I, I think a lot of times, especially in the nineties, um, I, I have to say like growing up in that kind of thing, I think music is probably one of the best escapes that anyone could have. And I think, yeah. I mean, truth be told, it's one of the biggest, like, I think it's why like music in general, like was a big part of everyone's lives in the nineties because music helped build up people's just, happiness. Just get hit different. Um, I think one of the episodes that, um, you know, eventually I want to touch on is like, what lyrics like from like any of the songs from the 90s like really hit you because yeah you know like there's definitely ones that like i heard a couple of songs the other day and i'm yeah i'm like another time um that i was yep. like oof i remember that song i remember like how this was i remember all of these things you know where i'm just like that hit yeah yeah, yeah. no i think that's i think everyone no matter what time period they grow up in, will have like those lyrics or those words that really say just everything inside their their hearts yeah. and minds. And yeah, I think that's a like, that would be a great episode to work off because literally, I think the nineties and nothing else is like you know besides uh, checkered patterns, uh, yellow, oh, God, pink, yeah. and I'm I'm just trying to think all of like the, the colors of the nineties. Yeah, all the bright colors, the little swoosh thing that yeah. was like on the cups that like, you know, I mean, it kind of disappeared and now everyone's like that cup. <laughs> laser <laughs> that light. Design. Yeah. Like yeah. like school picture laser light. That's probably oh, like the, Yeah. But I mean, school. people were making fun of that even like at 2009 because of the awkward family photos, you know, like yeah. oh yeah. No, no, I think everyone had that. Like my school pictures always were like I'll have the lasers because everything else looks depressing. <laughs> I don't need to be reminded how depressing this time period is. At least give me the lasers so that I have a moment of feeling like maybe I was in that terrible Star Wars remake at some point and I was just a background extra. Yeah. Maybe. At, at least give me that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Let me, let but, me just pretend there's like a, a whole laser light show going on behind me and I'll just stand here being like, Oh god, and you have the the, yeah. the the photographer just be like just a little more to the left. Right, right. A little more to the down, left. Chin down, chin, chin a little turn up, turn, head, a little up, turn, turn, yeah, turn, 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 turn. Like, oh Jesus. It's like yeah. God, I'm not clay. I I have a spine. It can only turn right. so much. Uh I don't know how one of them let me take a photo. Like I had to retake my my one of my photos because like the, I like I had so much frizz, like just mm. off the top of my head i was like how did you not know that that would be a thing like it was like just just up you know and now i have to remember that i had hair at one point oh gotcha <laughs> and i had i had the cory matthews hair Ooh. yeah okay. it was wait i mean the problem is like everyone said oh it was wait no it was curly it, it, like oh, I would, gotcha. I looked. What what was her name from back in the day? Um, that little blonde-haired girl who was always in like the, the. That doesn't matter. Oh, oh um, that girl. Yes, yes. No, the Pepsi commercial, right? Um, the, I, I the, no, it's it more like in the '30s. It was uh, her who oh, was like, like oh Shirley like, Temple. Like, thank you, Shirley Temple. I had Shirley yeah. Temple hair. Ah. Uh. And oh, the thing no. is, I, if I grow it out, it basically became like a brillo pad. Yeah, bro. Yeah. And and the thing is, like every time I was in a class picture, if I, if my f parents didn't try to like comb the oh, no. living hell out of my hair, the frizz would literally just be outside of frame, and I could never get a good picture. And but then again, I was also one of those kids that just, if it wasn't for the fact that my parents were paying for the picture, I wouldn't have smiled, and then they would have demanded some kind of like retribution out of me. Oh jeez, yeah. Oh no. <laughs> but that's just me. Like that's just because yeah. you know I I don't like I don't like surrendering. <laughs> oh gosh, I feel like well, kind of had to there, but like everything else, no. Yeah. I mean, that speaks to album covers. I think where it's just like it's not laser lights. It's um, what is it? Uh, it's it's the it's the uh the guy going like this or like this or the it's, it's one of those like like uh, uh artsy covers where they're like looking off in different directions. Oh yes, yes, yeah. Uh, and like at different sh like positions in the in the background, like you know, like they're looking off in the distance. Down. Yeah, and then looking like stop, away. yeah, like what's over there? Is it my yeah. career? Because I'm not going to have one after after the right. second album Searching drops. For it. Searching for it. Yeah. 
too funny. We're searching for something because I think Joey Fatone's over there with my with uh, the pizza order that he asked me to deliver. Right, right. Oh, geez, yeah. Uh, sorry, just I, I keep remembering like fallen artists, and the only ones I can come up with are like from those boy bands. Um, oh, gotcha. Yeah. But yeah, uh, to get back onto. Uh, to, to, so to, we were talking about how like 90s fashion is coming back like there's all of these things the fanny packs where i'm like oh, god yeah they're coming they're coming yeah, yeah. i mean the thing is like i said it's cyclical and i think it'll oh. always be cyclical I mean, right it now like always, spandex is yeah. the thing again um what was that sorry no, I'm just saying like spandex is a thing again with with like leather pants yeah. and everything. I think that was like, I don't know if that was like, I think that was a 70s thing, but I'm dead sure no, like no, those there was appeared in the 90s. Some times in the 90s, yeah, all of that stuff is coming back. Um, I I I think um again one of those things where I'm like, I next time do you want to talk about MC Hammer? Because like I think that oh, yeah. around the same time I I want to talk about fast fashion and then how how everything's coming back around. Um. What I did want to say is that, um, like, polar, like, okay, so I went to the Museum of Ice Cream, which is very Instagrammable, and, oh, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> and uh, these, these, like, let's say they were, like, 19, like, these kids, right, they're, like, yep. going around, they have one of the Insta cameras, and they're, like, uh, like, my friend had his camera, and, like, they're, like, hey, could you take a picture with our camera? And then they're like, you have to like leave it and just let it develop. And it, we were just like cracking up because we were just like, do you think that we don't know? <laughs> Did you think were that you, we didn't were experience you this? <laughs> what? You have you, to just set it down. You know, what it, new you, technology is this? Yeah. Wait, so was it Polaroid cameras or like what, what are we I talking about here? So, um, I don't know if Polaroid makes their own Fuji, definitely does, um, where uh, it's it's called an Instacam now. It's not uh, a Polaroid. Um, I have a Polaroid zip cam or a printer um, that doesn't have any ink in it. It's very interesting. Um, so like I just like I Bluetooth it to my phone and send pictures to it. Um, yeah. <sighs> I oh god this rem I, I hate going back to like the two thousands but then I have to remember like in the two thousands they had those like where you had yes. like the cameras you like attached right into the into the printer and everything I'm like oh god now they, they have the Bluetooth thing they and, also had it for um like the Nintendo uh, sorry not oh, the, right. no, the Game Boy yeah. yeah no I know which one you're talking about it was the dot matrix like weird printer that yes. like you you had like the the what was it the golf ball like camera that you put into your, yes. into your yeah your, it was a game boy color or, or something where it was like all pixelated and you took the photo and it I swear I would rather have taken a picture with <laughs> I don't know like a dollar store Insta right camera. Something else. yeah oh god yeah oh god yeah um, God, if we're talking about stuff and in the then 90s. I think in the early 2000s, and like, I mean, things are going to like weave into our lives now and into our memories. Because um, I'm just thinking like, what, did I like go through my like country phase and then I went through, I think I did, I went through my country phase and then I went into like, I'm going to be kind of, you know, badass, like listen to rap. And then like, I got out of that. <laughs> Um, like, I don't know. I, I, en I yeah. envy you because I went from not knowing anything to Spice Girls to grunge and oh, to yeah. like a pseudo heavy metal stage. And that was about the closest I got to like, I, a, I went through a, a heavy a 80s phase. Like, I think like, uh, early high school just was like everything 80s after like sixth grade where everything was 70s. It was weird. I, I'm, I'm, I don't know. <laughs> No, no, it, it's it's like it's like yeah. movies where it's like ten years behind. Like in the seventies, you had like everyone wearing sixties gear, and then the eighties, yeah, oh, everyone yeah. wearing seventies yeah. gear. It's it, I think it's the same thing in real life. It's just like we're all ten years behind for the most part, especially like, if I don't know. Sometimes like you just choose an aesthetic, and you're like, you know what? I like that aesthetic. I'm going for it. I'm good, you know. And you're just like, yeah. I'm like, I'm gonna enjoy that for a while. I'm gonna enjoy that for a while. Um, I wish I had that. I really do. <laughs> I had the same green jacket for like 10 years and that thing like it lasted a while, but God, that thing just, it, it needed to die at the end. Oh, gotcha. So, 
<laughs> no, but I get what you're saying. Like, if you find an aesthetic style that really like speaks to you, like just, I, I think for the most part you need to latch on because like partially it gives you a sense of identity, especially in a time when like image was like everything, and oh, yeah, I yeah. think that just really <laughs> needed Sorry. to. This. I'm like that was Sprite. Image is that everything. Thirst is yeah. nothing. Yeah. Oh God. I, right. I wasn't trying for that. I know. <laughs> I'm really not trying for that and like oh god now i'm just yeah. remembering the video game that i used to play that was based off that fucking cool oh, spot geez. god oh, what i was gonna say in the 2000s there was um i think it might have been polaroid um and it was like it was the tiniest of tiny pictures yeah like it came out on a little strip and I remember those. I don't remember what like the cool thing about that was. Maybe just that everything was getting stickers. so mini, and like it was because there were yeah. stickers. As far as I'm okay. aware, is I, that, that I you could like vaguely, yeah. You, you I, as far as I was aware, because I remember that like you had like it was a little camera and like a yeah. roundish edge to it. You pulled it and then you get the stick and then you get the little pictures. I think what happened was if you didn't if it weren't stickers, you there were like you could put tape in the back and then just on your locker. It's like, Hey, we're all friends. It fits in my locker. This is great for the four years I'm going to be in high school. And then basically have this thing destroyed. Right. Right. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <sighs> it's, I think, I think it just helped build identity. I think that's the important part of it is that it went from music to helping build identity in the nineties to there being images in the two thousands that like really helped establish like your own sense of like, putting what's inside out and i think partially is that the music is what helped establish it but you need like stuff like photos and all that which as far as i can tell is still a 90s thing and it still carries over even to this day yeah. Oh, yeah. where it just it, it helps bring up those memories even if you have facebook and like sharing posts and all that like it's still emblematic of the fact that you want to have those images laying around but then again nothing's gonna be like a photo on the wall at least i don't think so yeah i mean i still have photos on the wall <laughs> <laughs> and I, wish our, I did. Actually, I have a whole poster board of my uh some of uh some postcards and some uh uh oh my gosh. Some uh ticket stubs and cuz I make sure to get the tickets. <laughs> mm. And pictures from my zip. Um or from the uh, Polaroid zip. Yeah. I got a comforter back there. <laughs> <laughs> That's about the closest I got, so I didn't for you. Okay. <laughs> um but yeah in terms of like the 90s like it was really the era of here's this image that says everything about us mm -hmm. and that just like that cements like everything for the outside world is just here's right this here's the image mural, yeah or, here's this mural or here's these pictures or here's oh, yeah. this esoteric geometric shapes in my in my sweater oh, this is what yeah. i am yeah. At least that's what my parents think when they buy it from me from Filene's. Um, and Filene's? then I I don't I'm like uh, that might have been an East Coast thing because I'm like uh, oh maybe, yeah yeah because I'm like Filene's. It, it, it was it's the Macy's of like the new I think the New England area. Oh gotcha yeah. Like, sorry. Well, I mean, I, I, no 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 it's okay you know. it's okay I'm like the new. Nope. Um, it, 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 the short version is like if you were like in the new england area oh it was huge like the like mm -hmm. it, but the thing is like i i remember the fashion because my mom used to work at those kind of stores so i remember the fashions back then yeah, where it was right. just like everything was puffy like everything had to be puffy or it had to be okay. um it had to have pumps or like yeah. It had to have like zippers and like it was basically like a rob liefeld comic where it's like here's all these pockets and everything are you using for anything? <laughs> yeah, makes sense. Yeah, I mean, I know, they're, but... they're just they're just tactical pockets that, or you know, they just look like I don't know. They look nice. Um, I, I mean, they do. Yeah. I mean, I mean, growing up like that was it was hilarious because I used to be in a fashion show for '90s uh, outfits. It was a small one, but like, God, I remember it where it was just like, here's here's your backpack that doesn't help with anything, and here's your here's your sweater vest that doesn't look like anything and just that was pretty much the 90s as far as i was aware was just like here's okay. your sweater vest here's your backpack and here's your okay. uh, nike pumps yes 90s and and at some points there were like yeah the puffy jackets 
Um, at different points, there was the, the everyone's making fun of the windbreakers. Yeah. Um, there were the um, the club jackets that were like, the, uh, oh my gosh, they were like leather or something, and like they had something on them. I just yeah. keep thinking about plant Hollywood jackets. And yes, those yeah, are those thing. are kind of the club jackets that it's like, okay, all right. Okay. It just it just feels like a like a bigger version of a high school jacket or like a letterman's yeah. jacket where it's like, yeah. oh, we're we're this big important. That's we're, great. We're so important. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't pretend to know any of that stuff. I mean, as you know, I kind of disconnected. It was like, and I remember. Like, you know how you're talking about how, like, people like to see, like, other people just, like, fall from grace? Like, I remember just being like, I don't even like Britney Spears or Backstreet Boys. And I didn't. I really didn't. I hated that. Oh, yeah. And, like, now, like, I have Backstreet Boys on my list. Like, uh, like I listen to Amazon Music, so I have to, like, add my music to, like, what yep. I want to, like, listen to. And um, so I have, um, I have Backstreet Boys on there, like... Um, because when I went to Europe, like I would, we had to like get on a bus cause there were 30 of 30 students, you know, going around and the girls in the back of the bus would sing Backstreet Boys all the time. And so I'm like, now it's just nostalgia. Like I'm okay with it because it's nostalgia. Like, you know, just it, and like kind of remembering like where I was and I, kind of the thoughts that I would have about like, I don't care who you are or what you did as long as you love me. And like how, um, oh my gosh, she's a D-list actress that has like the red hair, kind of a hoarse voice, very skinny face. I can't oh. remember her name, um, but she's a comedian. And, oh God. I sounds familiar. Yeah. But she made kind of a joke, which I'm like, you know, like you're, when you're in that society, you have that, you know, you have those thoughts. Um, like she, she thought the same way that I did. It's like, oh, I don't care if you're a whore as long as you love me, you know. And it was like, why was that like an okay thing, you know, for like people to just be like, oh, well, if you're a whore, you're not lovable, you know. Like now uh, I'm like, what a very positive song though. Like I don't care what you did in the past as long as you love me. Like that's it's so beautiful. And like at that time, no, nope. <laughs> no, I, I get that. I mean, yeah. I, I've never been huge on the. See, I looked it up, and my and, yeah. and the first thing that pops up is uh, Backstreet Boys. Unfortunately, because for as long as you love me was one of their songs. Unfortunately, oh, gotcha. But um, no, I completely agree on that front. But then again, this is emblematic of a long-standing problem with you know owning sexuality and all that. And God, mm. is it like prevalent nowadays more than ever? Because right, I mean, with with streaming and everything and that's a whole topic we can get into at some other point but i think i think the 90s definitely was the period where it i don't want to say it turned a corner but i think it was starting to mature because there was a lot more of that owning of image and i think that was the important lesson learned from the 90s was that as yeah you can you can like it was starting to get to the point where you still be sexy but you can own it like you can still carry it oh, over. Yeah, now, yeah. now don't get me wrong it was still rampant that there was like the image problem of like you know right i mean the problem is it's hollywood let's let's be frank hollywood has always been that kind of problem and it, it was going to take a very very long time and there's still problems with it that said i still think that there was points and i uh, you have to forgive me i can't remember any of them off the top of my head okay. but there were still points where it seemed like we were getting in the right direction of yeah, you could be sexy, but and still be intelligent. And we're starting to peak, yes. at least. Oh, yeah, points. that was like the part where, yeah, it was like there's so many blonde jokes there. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, like it, it was it was bad. It was bad. And I think that kind of um, like did um, what you would call it. Um, it, it did a lot like you know it's like oh you're pretty but there's nothing going on upstairs you know but it's like oh yeah yeah I, but the thing is i think the acknowledgement of the joke helps dissuade from it and right. i think that's the important point is that yeah if you make the joke it starts to become less true because right. don't get me wrong 
I mean, there is points to prove the rule, but the majority of it is, yeah, there's plenty of blonde, blonde people that are intelligent and have, you know, obviously thoughts and feelings. And the thing is, when those jokes are made, I think it points out the ridiculousness of that statement. And I, help, and I think it, it like, right. the, yeah, you laugh, but then there's that moment in the back of your head thinking, wait, that can't possibly be true if they're making a joke about yeah. it. Yeah, no, no one is really, like, that, that dumb, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and the thing is, like, if you're that dumb, it's not because you're blonde, it's because you're dumb. And I think that's also something to take from the 90s, is that image, while it was everything, it was also deceptive. And I think that also was another lesson to learn from it, was that image is probably, like, a thin veneer. Very thin. The two. Very, very yeah, thin. Very thin. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I think rappers... And I'm talking about candy wrappers in this context. Mm -hmm. um, really, like, they used to change like crazy, I think, in the 90s, where it went from like three different things, if I remember right, before like they settled on something. Oh, uh, gotcha. Like they were kind of like test running and being like, yeah. here you go, here you go, here. Okay, you like this one? Okay. Oh, well, I mean, uh, was... the, the comedian's name was uh, Kathy Griffin. Thank you. I was yes. trying to remember that. Yeah, because <laughs> I, I, I know I heard about her recently and just. Oh God, yeah. I mean, controversy all the time. I I don't know if there's a time she hasn't said opened her mouth and just said something, you know, e like either poignant and the, everyone was like, "Oh no," or like, um, or just said something just I don't know, so off the wall that everyone's like, "Oh no, oh, no." Well, then she's doing her comedy right because I think at that point, like comedy. Yeah. <laughs> has to do that. I mean, right, okay, right. The, does, the problems does. with like the, the Dennis Leary special. I think there was like lawsuits about it, but the thing is, it still was influential in its own right as like a moment in time where people were like the, the oh, one oh, in the nineties. The um, and I'm an asshole. Yep, that okay. one. Mm. Yeah, that I think that one was the night, and I think that one was pretty prevalent. Like everyone, like it, I mean, he was as far as I'm aware, he was like ripping off another comedian. I, I think it was like Bill Burr, but don't oh, quote gotcha. me on that. But I mean, the thing is, yeah. um, with the, with like stuff like that in the '90s, um, controversy has to happen, yes. especially during that oh, period yeah. because it helps. Oh, it helps, yeah. you know, spread out um, new information because, like, with the, Kathy Griffin, comedians were how like I think they were like the jesters of that period yes. where like they were like dissenting voices and they helped bring about change and everything because they did. Yeah, I mean, Comedy Central was huge back in the 90s and i think it i mean it's to a lesser degree now than it was but like comedy central right. as far as the word was like the dissenting voice of a generation and i'm not talking about just south park i'm talking about like oh no no like, I, I was thinking about the comedy specials and then um i just watched uh, a youtube video not just like maybe two months ago watched uh, a youtube video about the man show and i was like oh, oh. yep Yep. Yeah. There's, I mean, dissenting yeah. voices of all types, of all types. Uh, yeah. I, I, I'm sad to say I used to watch that, but mostly because I didn't have like a solid idea of what it meant to be a man. And I'm going to mm -hmm. be honest, I think that helped dissuade me from the idea of the ideal man. So I have to oh. at least thank him for that, which is like, thanks for showing me what not to do. Yeah. Thank you very just, much. Just the disrespect. Yeah. Well, um, my brother used to watch it and uh he was really all about that that drink life um and yeah. i mean i hope that it i don't talk to him so like i don't know if his opinion has changed but like he really did he did say some things that i'm like please tell me you've changed that opinion you know like that i i think he was one of those people who thought that if a lesbian just found the right man you know, oh, God. Yeah. Okay. which I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, again, one of those things uh, oh. we had, a, a, you know what, I, I keep saying that I had a lesbian neighbor and I'm like, I think she was a pansexual before the word because her <sighs> partner was non-binary and they both worked on the police force, which is like definitely something that like very right. interesting would love to like, yeah, you know, like I think that that can kind of be woven into a whole lot of different discussions but like oh yeah you know, totally. but like yeah this is like early 90s this is our neighbor um and yeah uh yeah she and and of course the um the partner didn't um like there was no word for non-binary at that point really yeah but yeah 
so it, it was it was interesting um so like yeah i'll i i have to kind of switch up to like modern words i think and you know start i mean everyone does to a certain degree like the younger mm -hmm. generations are going to pick it up faster obviously because they're going to be growing right. up with it but i mean i think the greatest part about like the 90s is it still opened up a possibility for that because yeah we, we there was yeah, there was definitely cannot, jokes we made but. yeah oh god yeah I, I mean i cannot wait to talk about like where like um like the ellen the first show <laughs> mm. was an issue um and then uh like roseanne uh oh and the like the britney spears uh like and madonna kiss but also the britney the the uh yep. madonna and uh, christina aguilera kiss because like two different perceptions there like yep. in the same moment it was like those are things where i'm just like oh my gosh i so that you know stuff for other times <laughs> no but i I'm, i completely agree like i think definitely it's something to talk about because it is as much as people want to deny it like it what it um gender gender issues as well as you know yeah. um lgbt um issues were definitely prevalent in in that decade regardless yeah. of you know there were there were ups and downs but then again it was better than like the last decade where there was like minimal communication about it. at least this one it was starting to become a more okay. um prevalent yeah. idea yeah. yeah like at, at yeah. least it was becoming more than just like a sideline joke it was it was yeah. what was um uh, i hate using this quote but that's the only one i can think of it went from in what can we do to you which i think was beastmaster 2 which was a gay character okay. in that movie and it was a complete stereotype we went from that to something more will and grace which is not i think it was a better like written at least it yeah, was not like a complete I, stereotype it, it it yeah like i mean obviously the show uh as well as the l word had its problems but like um it at least was like developing you know yeah. it was the, the 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 wording the you know the awareness the like like I really like Will as like a character because it's just like, huh? So like you you don't have to you know just yeah fit a stereotype to be like you know just just have have your sexual identity like it's okay like yeah, yeah. like it's not, like it became like I think the 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 idea is that it became the idea first and now it's starting to become nuanced which i think is probably the best thing that can happen is that the 90s were very much that kind of way and for the record if we're going to do a roseanne show my wife's going to be on that because literally she's probably one of the biggest roseanne fans oh, and yes. and she'd probably be a and there's so much there's so much yeah yeah but yeah. The, getting back to what we're saying um the lgbt um scene i think became a bigger more prevalent just like underlying current because now just things just were more out in the open. Like everything was like, I think the idea was like, everything was bombastic. Everything was jumped to 11. Like everything was extreme yeah. or, you know, the cartoons were just, I don't think there was any, aside from the Simpsons. Cause I know they had one. I mean, I know there was, um, Smithers, but like, that was always right. a hint, but yeah, it was always there, coded that way, but not, yeah open yeah because i don't think they could like i think they could hint right. at it okay. but they could never yeah. you know say it outright at least until will and grace showed up but the thing is th there was still like there's still the problematic areas like back in the 80s where they couldn't really bring up a healthy idea of what lgbt was as opposed to the 90s where it was developing a better idea and i say that knowing the time period because right. obviously right. Oh, there yeah. was still the undercurrent of you know, oh, ha, 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 and, you know, here's jokes for you. Here's your stereotypes. See, list movies have their stereotypes and everything because people don't know any better. But I think the the movies that knew how to do it right brought it into the forefront and brought it with dignity as well as grace and allowed the ideas to be respected and given the weight that they deserved. And I like the movie I keep thinking about is like, but oh, I'm yeah. a cheerleader, but I'm fairly certain that was in the 2000s, yes. which is. That was 2000. And that's the only one I can. Ooh, wait. Yeah. No, oh, really? That? Hold on. It might have been. Nine. Please, if it's if it's that, we could talk about it. I mean, I, we can I talk think about it anyway. 
Yeah, but, like for me, I mean, just, sometimes it's like the two thousands, like two thousand ninety nine. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Who was the actresses in that? Natasha uh, Leon and the, yeah, Claire yeah, Duvall. Yeah. Uh, I love her, <laughs> especially in like the faculty. I do. God. I, do. I love that actress. Yeah. She was so yeah. good. And I mean, it, Natasha I mean, Leon's like you know she, she had some she had she had some good stuff going for her too. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, it, it's just I I like I like the like uh, Claire Duvall in that movie because basically um, her character in the faculty is basically what I want to look at look mm. like for the rest of my life <laughs> just got it but just looking like you're like like a, a grunge goth it's like that mm. that's pretty much yeah. where i want to be yeah that, that that that's my life goal at that point but yeah to get back to yeah. what we were saying like yeah um the 90s were always a mishmash and i think yes. that was the greatest i think it's probably the healthiest thing that could have happened because yes. oh yeah when it came to like the mainstream media and at least from, coming from someone who like was born in 87 um it was very by the numbers in certain ways where it was just oh here's your westerns here's your you know everything here's your um action movies here's your music oh yeah and then it just started yeah yeah Going i mean don't get me wrong i think with the drugs were a big part of it which i mean let's face it like I'm not going to, I mean, obviously, you know, hard drugs are a bad thing, but what I think came out of that was like the mess that came from the nineties helped really, um, contextualize everything. It brought this, this underlying, just, we have to kind of like streamline all this. So here's the mess that is all this that we want to be in, in the future. Let's un try to untangle it as best we can. Right. Right. Yes. Let's try our best. And some things worked well, and obviously some things did not work well. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. My, see, the only thing I can remember, basically, from the 90s is just Nickelodeon, because that was, like, my channel back in the day. Mm -hmm. um, it it was my channel. And, yeah, and I'm like, and the Rugrats, and, yeah. Well, like, I mean, you're talking about politics, and I'm like, ooh, when did the dr war on drugs begin? And also... Um, <clears throat> There, I mean, the, the again the politics and everything. Um, so the, like, growing up in California, like you don't get away from politics, like no. ever. And um, I know that. Uh, just side note, um, <clears throat> I know that one of my friends was like, "You learned about critical race theory." I'm like, "You cannot talk about the history of California without including uh, a whole lot of people of color." uh you're like mm. the the japanese the germans the, the the mexicans um the um wait did i say i the chinese like all of that yeah. all all of that like they were like it it all of all of it and the native americans and the and the native tribesmen like you know like i mean yeah and um i'm like what else uh I'm like, geez, was there? I mean, that's a majority of it. Like, you can't tell the story of California without all of that because, like, uh, I'm like Chinese workers, the concentration camps, the uh, Zoot Suit riots, the yep. you know that California used to like be owned by Mexico. Then there was yep. also um, the missions. Like, I mean, that was like yeah there was like there's so much stuff that comes from mexico that it's just like yep. nope you can't like you, you you have to talk about it um but you can't talk uh, about it right right and i'm like you have to be very aware of it um yeah so there was like uh the, the idea of welfare especially in the 90s like um that was you know the the welfare moms and the welfare queens and the work uh, welfare to work program and all of these things where like people wanted to be like oh those pe those people on welfare those people on welfare and it's like i didn't even know what that even meant like i just heard oh, yeah. it you know and it was like you know now His i'm like oh like you mean food stamps you mean the people who can't afford food? You think that they're what living on some high hill over here? Like, 
you know, oh, God, yeah. like, like living, living it off stakes, like every night, like, I think the nineties is definitely where the disparance with the disparance, the, 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 the I can, disparity. I can say where, yeah, the disparity between how politics is in the mind of a politician and how politics is in practice in real life started to, if not, if not really slip, it showed like the after effects of it pretty hard where like the policies that were enacted and said really started to like, wait, this is bad. Like, I, I think, I don't know if there was like, a. I, I know people were probably aware of it, but I think in the 90s, there was definitely a closer tie to when people could like look at the policy and think, wait, isn't that kind of bad? Like, I, I think older people were starting to be a little more critical of things. Um, I mean, like, you had, like, George W., not George W., sorry. You had George Bush original, and mm -hmm. then George Bush, actually, Crips, Crispy. <laughs> that um you know yet he was making policies all over the place and you know no a lot of them didn't work and then you had like bill clinton come in and then he had his own problems and i think i, I want to say like i think it was like around the 90s or at least the mid 90s where politics started to really become just i, I think it started to become the prototypical like clown show that we are seeing nowadays oh, like yeah. it started oh, to yeah. really just become I, yeah. I, I hate to say it british politics to a certain degree because <laughs> <laughs> right i i mean i mean yes there's a lot to go on with that one um oh gosh uh what was i gonna sorry, say just, was, i can only think well, of like i, mean, I think I just think kind of leading in to uh the 2000s you know like that divide um you know like i remember just really yeah just how how much that really affected obviously a lot of a lot of the politics that probably that, that do, you know, that, that same division shows up and, you know, yeah, there's, there's studies on that too. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I completely agree. And the thing is, I, I say British politics in that I've watched like videos of British politics really just becoming almost laughable at a certain point. And I think we're not at that point currently or back then, but it really starts to show that there was, I almost want to say like a comical feel to it where, Oh, gotcha. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, where, like, you start to see the politicians almost like celebrities in their own right as opposed to, like, public service figures. And I don't know if that's, like, the best possible way to go about it because, I mean, you had, like, episodes of The Simpsons with, like, Bob Dole and Bill Clinton. Oh, yeah. And, oh, God, yeah. Oh, yeah. And George Bush. And I, I'm, I, and I always wonder if that was, like, wait, why are they becoming celebrities now? Like, I know celebrities are celebrities, like people who've been in movies and whatnot. Like, why are we, like, glorifying these politicians like this? And But then I keep thinking about it, and it's more like we kind of made fun of them to a certain degree. And I think partially it was, like, The Daily Show that started to do that. But I think it was more just, like, their antics and the fact that a lot more information was coming more prevalent out in the public forums that it just – we started to solidify that maybe politicians are kind of more hilarious than we thought. And looking at modern politics, I'd have to agree yeah. <laughs> to a lot, a lot of points, but that's just because I think now we're getting a clear picture of like the nineties started to show just how crazy it was. Oh at least yeah. That's I, see oh, yeah. It. I, I mean, it's, it's weird because that could be said for almost every decade, but like it just seemed different in the nineties too. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, no. Sorry. Yeah. Um, I'm like, Oh, for some reason I think I'm fading. So I'm like, Oh God. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, it's, it's just the way I, I agree with you. Like, cause uh, I mean, if you go back to like the 1900s, you had, um, mm -hmm. oh, God, the women's suffrage really started to come out where, you know, you yeah, had yeah. someone, you know, fighting for the right to vote by saying, oh, I'm going to be in prison like everyone else because you're not going to treat me like shit. But yeah, and then you had, um, you go up from the 20s and then it became about one person saying, oh, booze is the problem in America and then just completely created the, the yeah. you know, the mafia and all that. Well, uh, yeah, oh geez, yeah. Well, and, and then, like a lot of people will say like it was the first televised debate, you know, uh, between Nixon and uh, Kennedy that was like, the turning point and it's like because then you had someone who liked tv ready and you had someone who did not look tv ready and this was like kind of the first of its kind and 
it, it just like that then it was yeah more celebrity um, yeah yeah and one of the reasons why i thought that trump would win even though i was like mm, no uh, uh was it was a bad idea he I, would win i think is the best right. answer but but like I saw Schwarzenegger win in California and I was like, there's so many other people who could have figured out the deficit, the problems with finances that like had been, you know, like running that out of the, you know, 200 that were, um, that like, uh, which we'll call it, um, uh, that like, I just knew that like people, that it, people, vote for celebrities you know yeah. so i'm like i think he was popular enough and the na name recognition enough that people would vote for him or find it funny you know and be like oh no yeah. i voted for him you know because they thought that it would you know just be like a joke like they wouldn't yeah. wouldn't affect them in any way you know like oh well, i mean it starts with reagan i think i think reagan yeah was i was like gonna say reagan very, too, right because he yeah, was yeah the first one i mean he was an actual like movie star that became right. a politician and rose to presidency yeah. and i think that was I, I i can't state whether or not it was based off of you know popular image or anything but given what i've seen in the zeitgeist of you know the world i wouldn't put it past it obviously but the thing is like right. like you said Schwarzenegger was a no name so was donald trump and i think we're living in a time where people were, were, were raised in the 90s and name recognition and image was important and, and as much as we want to deny it it still kind of is now yeah. obviously there's more learned people obviously there's people that are more observant than others and can really you know piece together things but again you're still dealing with a generation that was based off of image before everything else, regardless of, of, you know, however intelligent people are, yeah. you know, so what was going to happen was going to happen. And I think I, at a certain point it became inevitability, but I mean, there's a lot of things leading up to Trump's election. And I think we, I mean, there's an entire thousand essays that can be built on that, that sure, we could sure. get into over and over again. But I think the point of it is if we're coming at it from, a person that was raised in the environment of the nineties where it's not unusual that that would happen, that, that, that someone would be voted in like that. Cause I think a lot of, right. I, I, I mean, obviously the two thousands is when people I think started to vote more in mass and more with their minds as opposed to just here's a name on a ballot, go vote. Cool. I wonder if rock the vote really did work then, you know, if like people were like thinking of politics. <laughs> That's yeah. actually true. Like the voter die movement, I think that might oh, also yeah. worked. Like I, I think oh, there's yeah. definitely like a, a thing to be said of of Hollywood having like the ability to just push mountains. And again, that yeah. And I think, um, God, I don't know why I keep thinking about like random '90s cartoons while we're talking about like politics. But for some reason, like in my head, like we're talking about this politics, and then I keep thinking about like USA interviews that I remember where it had like the really cheap graphics. And for some reason, I keep coming back to Duckman. Mm. Oh man! And I and I mean, that's I, I don't know. Yeah. I I just that that that's where my brain is going. But then again, I recently rewatched Duckman because you know. There's nothing else on, and it's a lot more clever than I really gave it credit for. So that's that was kind of hilarious. I think where that was one of those adult cartoons, right? That like yep. it wasn't meant for kids. It was meant to be intelligent and consumed by people oh, yeah. who would more understand. Yeah. Oh yeah, no. When I was a kid, like I was like seven or eight. Oh, everything flew right over my head. Same with Beavis and Butthead, Aeon Flux, um, a lot of liquid television. Um, I miss it. I miss. I it. think all of us do. All of yeah. us do. Um, what was it? The the head. I think it was. Oh my god, the head. The Max. Yeah. yeah. Like, I don't like, remember much of the Max except for like the comic book. Well, I mean, the thing is, I don't like the plot was very simplistic from the comic okay. book, like the adaptation from it. But God, it was so well animated, and I think that's what I remember most is just I mean, like they mixed Fox, live action good. stuff with it. Yeah. So. Like, geez, how 90s, the Eon Flux, yeah? Oh, God, I think everyone, like, I mean, that show didn't make any goddamn sense. Even now, like, when you watch it, like, there are parts that make sense, and the more right. you look into it, it makes less yeah. and less sense. 
Yep. Because it has to do with like, what was that religion that was? It, it that is, there is an entire religion that's actually based off of some parts of the Aeon Flux, and if you believe it, and mm -hmm. honestly, it takes way too long to, to really get into it. Um, but like a lot of the '90s, just it brought. I mean, again, like you have that the half of it where it's all image based, mm -hmm. but you have the half of it where it really just. Nothing else really brought stuff like Anna yeah, Flux and those kind of cartoons where it just it was so cerebral that like years later you just can't help but think, what's going on? And I mean, obviously it was also sexually empowering to watch a woman beat the shit out of everyone, you know, in black leather yeah, and yeah, it's like, yeah. almost, which is kind of what I was getting at with like you know pro sexuality where it's like here's yeah. this woman that just is incredibly capable of anything who's yeah. just, you know so sexually. Unlike, you know, other comics that I can name, Lady Death, where, oh, didn't, okay. sorry, I, I just, I had to call it out because, like, there's no plot to Lady Death. Um, like, but, I vaguely remember owning Lady Death, and I'm like, did I even, I don't think I ever read it. No, because it's all about the cover. Because you know it was about, all about the cover. Oh my god, it was all about the cover. Yeah, that's what it's, it like so, it says. The '90s is that like a lot of comics were just about the cover, and that's what created the comic boom and crash. That's true. It's true. Um, I, uh, I, I, I did read Gen 13. I did not read. Oh, that me book. too. I, I used to not, love Gen 13. Yeah, uh, before Monkey Man O'Brien. Um, it like, and you do you know that one of the um the animator like yeah one of the animators on there like she went on the real world san diego really i didn't she know did. that yeah i think it was like snow leopard or something like went on like yeah i, I never watched yeah. too much of that of, of, of oh, gotcha. real world or... i only watched it because it was san diego and i was living there at the time and yeah, yeah. They, they turned that house into a restaurant which i think was a good idea <laughs> oh that was oh i mean that makes sense yeah, yeah. A, a lot of those properties probably should, you know, probably become still. Yeah, yeah, but um, yeah, they uh, it it was just such this weird kind of experience. But yeah, uh, it, I mean, Gen thirteen. I mean, a lot of that. I think I had the first one, but with um, oh my gosh, rainstorm. On uh, the I think so. God, yeah. um, in, in the I, school, I, I, know, school I can hear that. Yeah. I can read. I can see the cover in my head, but that's about it. Right, with like, the books and everything, with the short skirt and the and yeah. 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 Like what was it was Fairchild? I think was Fairchild. Fair. No, I thought she was the. I thought Fairchild was the redhead. Yes, that's right. Yeah, okay. Fairchild's the redhead. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I, I. It's also been like forever since I've <laughs> seen that. Because to be honest, like when I think Gen thirteen, and again, this is probably just the East Coast thing. I remember the figure that they had of Fairchild being at like a KB Toys. And just like oh, I always gotcha. wanted it, I always wanted because she looked so Baby badass and cool. Toys. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm going there. Yeah, it was like uh, th if we're gonna talk about '90s, like I think it's like the mall. Baby toys. toys. Is that? Just, I mean, I and like I, I mean, I'm guessing that a lot of people would have that, you know, where it is the, um, like that that high shelf at KB Toys where you wanted that toy. Like, yeah. 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 No, no, I completely agree. Where, it, like, for me, it was, like, it was uh, Mars Attacks figures. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like, the Mars Attacks figures. Um, Shad like, the Shadow had a, a series of toys over there that I just absolutely loved. Power Rangers, Megazords. Mm. Um, Shadow, Shadow had a movie out in the nineties, right? Yep, Alec Baldwin, and to be honest, it still holds up. Okay, it really it, does. That, they had the invisible building in that in that. Uh, yep, in that movie. Yeah, um, I can't remember okay. the actor who played Shi Wong Khan, but he was really good. Like, I have to rewatch it because, like, I remember, I I remember that there was a movie that was like set in the fifties about. A building that they figured out was invisible. Because um, and, he hypnotized yeah. the whole city. Yeah. And they just walked past that. It was just, um, but like, there's like, you know, just those clips in my, in, in everyone's brains, but in my brain, where I'm just like, I remember the movie. 
like I remember the scene. I remember like how dark it was, and then it was this big reveal, and I'm like, oh, I gotta watch that. Like I, yeah, I, I, I know it wasn't Dick Tracy, but I couldn't remember what it no. was. I mean, Dick Tracy was also good, but was like it the sh- no, right? No, uh, hold on. Let me look up when Dick Tracy came out because I think that was like late '80s, to be honest. Uh, uh, I but- think that was like 1991, maybe. If it is, I'm be happy because yeah. But um, getting back to that, yeah. If you listen, if you rewatch the movie, um, mm-hmm. what you're yep, 1990. Okay. Yeah. What you'll remember, what you'll find is like, I've rewatched it a number of times since mm-hmm. uh, since like I was a kid. And to be honest, the thing that like as an adult I loved about it now is the music. Like it is up there with like Batman in the musical score like it is so well done like it's 1930s pulp kind of just ambiance and it has like it's and it still has like the 90s feel because it has like um psychic powers and everything so it still has it it doesn't lapse into like oh it's so old and i can't enjoy it right it has like the psychic power thing where it's like oh my kid i get to enjoy it and he has like abilities (laughs) and everything yeah interesting yeah yeah, Isn't and it? I think like when when you end up like rewatching movies, like you get different things every time. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. the Phantom, like it's still like even that holds up. Ooh, and I, I think that I, was like I, late nineties. So uh <laughs> I uh dated someone uh who was a film major when I, I was yeah, probably seventeen. And I saw every movie for a six month period. And then I was like, I'm not watching another movie. Like, I just, I just, I got so tired. I got so tired of, of all the movies. Um, And I I don't blame you. I like, I don't like, I was already kind of like meh about, I think movies before that. And then after that, I was like, I don't want to watch another fucking Hollywood movie. And so like, that's how I know when, I, but I'm a cheerleader came out because my mom saw it in an alternative or yeah, an alternative and independent theater. Um, yeah. Like, you know, she saw it in theaters and then told me about it. Um, yeah. So like uh, the, like I'll go occasionally very rarely, but I'm like, Oh yeah. I'd like there's definitely movies that I would watch <laughs> um, yeah. that like, and we can talk about um, that are very like iconic nineties um yeah I, but i th- i think we'll probably have to we'll probably have two different conversations because i'll have to explain my side you'll have to explain your side cuz i'm just like the phantom oof uh not not in my wheelhouse <laughs> i mean the thing is it's definitely i wouldn't say it's iconic i would think if we're going to go iconic and i hate saying this you'd have to go like 90s cheese and my immediate yes. thought is like something with uh what's his name the comedian that everyone like doesn't ben like Stiller? no no it's, it's um what's his name like, oh eddie murphy no he was like always in the 90s stuff he was like in the jury thing and the oh. biodome oh Polly shore okay oh, sure, yeah. Rob, Rob is, Paul... Schneider. yeah but... i mean Rob Schneider is like probably in there too but i think it was like yeah. one or two years. i was mostly thinking like biodome was like i think that's the prototypical like 90s movie because that is like that's the movie that like yeah. where you have like the major hijinks. But like, the... think about the politics behind that though. Like, Biodome sounds great now, you know. Yeah. Like, I mean, it doesn't sound terrible. Like, you know, they were trying to see what it would be like to like be sorry, be in quarantine, um, and like isolate oh, them. Good quarantine. Let's be clear. Good quarantine. Where good I actually quarantine had to so more... that they could like look at things. Yeah. Um, and yeah, like, I think that that was like, I, I mean, that's, that's definitely like, it's political and making fun of it, but like it brought it to light, you know, which yeah. is exactly what we talked about with like the, the, com- the comedy brings these things to light and good comedy will do that. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't think after a while, I mean, I think just Rob Schneider and Polly Shore, like, unfortunately they, um got into and this happens with you know uh, actors like uh uh, paul rubens too like they got into one character they got into one character and they couldn't break out of that you know so it wasn't like i i think polly shore is pretty intelligent and like you know a movie like biodome it has to be you know i mean i think he's doing a comedy club right now as far as i'm aware oh gotcha 
yeah he probably yeah that makes sense <laughs> um but like he uh like I think people just got tired of the hey buddy you know and just they were like I'm fucking done I'm fucking done you know they're like this is fucking annoying I'm out you know yeah exactly yeah and the thing is I I can bring this back to um uh Vanilla Ice and all that and where it's like yeah they typecasted things they typecasted Vanilla Ice into like trying to be more child friendly even though he's obviously a rapper from a very dark period Paul Shore he had that one line and the problem is, like, they milked it to oblivion. And, and the same thing happened with, like, Poland, to a lesser extent, though, because I because if you watch Mystery Men, like, well, no, he's still playing the same character. It's unfortunately just different flavor of it. But the thing I take away from it is, you're right, that I think mm-hmm. the problem is the 90s tended to, like, milk everything out as hard as it could. I mean, it's, don't get me wrong, media still does, but um, it, it yeah. really came to the point of, like, if this actor had this one bit you're only that one bit unless you're right. yeah, something you're like only that in one action bit. that's all that you can do yeah that's all you can be yeah i mean there are people who got away from that i mean there are. yeah i mean if, I, if, if, i mean if i that think that be... you kind of have to give yourself time to get over that um i, I think mean girls i think that was ooh, was that 2000 or was oh. that 1999 um give me a minute because honestly if that is i would love to watch that because believe it or not i've never watched that the closest i've gotten is jawbreaker and that's like that's my Ooh. favorite like mean girls movie jawbreaker is like i mean that's a horror movie but like oh my god it was a horror movie i had nightmares yeah. about it i didn't even see it yeah. yeah uh shoot 2004 i mean we can still talk oh. about it yeah i, mean, anyway, I, I wouldn't mind talking so about it amanda uh siegfried yeah uh, Seif- Seifred. Um, yeah, the, right, the second free. The blonde. Yeah. Um, she, uh, he, she t- took some time away from um, acting because of that role. She didn't want to be typecast as the dumb blonde. Um, yeah. And she kind of hated that, like, that. that's kind of how, you know, unfortunately, like, she had already been acting before that. And then now you know then she gets this this role and then she doesn't get to you know like expand away from from it you know unfortunately oh yeah no i i completely agree because right now i'm looking up jennifer's body yeah that was the other movie she was in yeah that was three years after that and that was definitely not the dumb blonde role um but i yeah i agree that a lot of times like people get typecast in that kind of thing and i think it's like emblematic of a lot of like series like um if you look back at like james bond um yeah. roles it's much the same way like um roger moore got typecast as james bond um pierce brosnan ever. got yeah yep typecast as james uh, pierce brosnan uh, well i mean he's like the stereotypical james bond unfortunately his movies aren't that oh, good when I, it comes I to like kind of, that sean connery would be kind of in that but i think sean connery like did enough to move away from from that well yeah i mean the thing is he was the first and he was mm-hmm. I, I think considered the more like um, aggressive James Bond, but the thing is, you're right. He did a lot more to like distance himself from that role. I mean, he came back to it a number of times, but I think he did enough afterward to really just cement himself as an actor. Roger Moore, maybe to a lesser extent. I mean, uh, what's his name? Timoth- Timothy Dalton, unfortunately. Mm. No, he, he, uh, Timothy Dalton was. Gonna, what's the other one I'm thinking of? There was a, there was one James Bond. It was in only one. It doesn't matter. I'm, okay. I'm, I, yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm, yeah. I'm getting off topic, but I'm, well, my point is, the problem is like Hollywood. I think it became more emblematic in the '90s, where if you had that one niche, that niche was just you, and you were stuck in until yeah. like the day you die or the day so you kind of yeah. fall. Which is sad, but yeah. I mean, the thing is, some actors have survived it. Um, yes, yes, obviously, you know, like they they have been and. and yeah, got got away from it, and you know, going back, yeah, to Vanilla Ice, where like he took his time away. It, it's oh, I think it's always good to like take the time away, let everyone forget, and then do something else. Uh, but like, I mean, we're still kind of seeing that with um, Robert Patterson and um, oh my god, the guy oh, who yeah. Harry Potter, because like, how do you get away from like those those two iconic yeah. roles? Yeah, yeah, no, I completely agree. Um, yeah. I will say though, with Daniel Pat with uh, Robert Pattinson, I. This is speaking to someone who's actually watched all the Twilight movies, and this is on like a bet. Um, he really is a better actor than you can give him credit for because he played it exactly like he hated the role, which is 
He did. I mean, he did. in interviews, yeah. he hated the role. And the thing is, I actually watched him in, uh, he was in that horror movie, The Lighthouse. And my God, okay. like, the, he's amazing. Like, because he plays someone mm. that, like, goes slowly insane. Like, it, it, like they would call that eldritch horror kind of, like, horror. Because it's made by the oh, same people oh, who yeah, did. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because it it's made by the same people who did Midsommar and um, um, uh, um, Hereditary. And, like, those really good, like, horror movies that have come out recently. And the thing is, like, I think those kind of movies really do bring out better lines in people. And, I mean, it, this is just coming from me because I... I, I try to give actors a chance because a lot of times it's not even their fault yeah. that a lot of times like stuff happens. Yeah. yeah. Um, I can't think of any of the time. I, I had one that I was thinking of. Um, I mean, I might have been Paul Rubens, but like if you like see him in like interviews, he's actually really, really. Are, I, mean, he, I mean, he loves his work, but like I, I think he's. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's content to be Pee Wee Herman, but. I mean, it's obvious, like, he has better talent to him. Actually, you know what, who I'm thinking of? Um, Mr. Bean. That's who I was going to talk about. Rowan Atkinson, yeah. Yeah. R- Rowan Atkinson, who um, I think in the 90s was pretty much cemented as Mr. Bean for that entire mm-hmm. period. But the thing is, if you look at his career before that, like, there was, like, The Witches, where he plays, like, the stuffy, like, um, mm-hmm. um, hotel exec- like manager, I think, or something like that he plays it really well because he's a really good actor and even and he played like i mean it wasn't a, it wasn't a sketch comedy bit but he's played the doctor and the thing is like i'm really sad he never got to play the doctor in real life because he could he comes off like someone from one of his gen- regenerations like i can see it i mean the problem is though i think he's difficult to work with that's probably the part of it but also it's just it was mr bean it's gonna be hard to yeah. Really just... yeah. How do you break away from Mr. Bean? <laughs> yeah. Um, probably Johnny English, but I don't know. That's just me. <laughs> uh... Yeah. I'm like, all right. I think we've exhausted <laughs> the the topic. <laughs> oh no! But there's one thing that I can say that I was really hoping oh, yeah. because I found this out. And this is about uh, back to our topic of vanilla ice. Yeah. And this was hilarious when I found it out. Okay. So, if any of you were Robert, um, vanilla ice was born on Halloween. Oh. Yeah. Interesting. But it's that's not the weird part. Okay. So he was doing a concert in the '90s, um, and he was about to go to Japan. Okay. In the in the concert before he was leaving, there was a girl. Um, punk, I think it was a goth girl. I don't. I, I. I'm not familiar with it. But the story is, she was flashing him and was buck naked the entire time. But then began to progressively stalk him. Ooh. To, he he stalked him to his plane. He stalked him to the airport. Stalked oh him God. to the hotel room in Japan. He she got into his hotel floor because he he rented out the whole floor. But she climbed the fire escape to get to the, his hotel floor. And then proceeded to start smashing light fixtures. Yeah. And when they, when security finally caught her, and this is the interesting part, um, they were confronting her about it, and she started crying, pr- heavily crying, until she started acting possessed, as in trying to like emulate someone from The Exorcist, trying to act right, like she was right. the devil, yeah. and saying that they were trying to claim vanilla ice for their own because he was born on Halloween and he was in the room at the time the the hilarious part of this is that that girl was convinced to do this by her parents who are part of a satanic cult in Ireland who are trying to to um, convert him so they could spread their message Jesus that is yeah. so complicated I oh wish I was talking about this, but he literally went on interviews about this for a while where, yes, he was stalked and this girl was brainwashed to try and get him to their side, literally slipping in satanic Bibles into his clothes to try and all because he was born on Halloween and was famous. Wow. That is so fucked up. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. And he still has nightmares about it, which is sad but like i think that that says a lot about the 90s where like it was this and what happened with jody foster where yeah the 90s was kind of a mess 
Yeah, it was. Yeah. I'm sorry, I just I couldn't leave without saying that story because okay. it was yeah. still so <laughs> prevalent. And it's so 90s where it's like there is satanic panic and they and the yeah, possession and people didn't know much about it and yeah, and the stalking, how the fuck did she find did you find him, you know, and his home <sighs> and it's all like that something stuff out of a horror and, movie. It really is. Like that is I mean, I, I'd probably want to quit just every, yeah, I'd probably want to quit. Yeah. Be like, no. I apologize for extending it out, but like, I couldn't leave this podcast without stating that one fact because I mean, it's just, it's too weird to not like, it's that, that is like, it, unless you're like Florida man, that's like the best nineties like story I could possibly give to help finish this up. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. Yes. Well, I'm glad that you shared it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I'm glad I got to research it because honestly, like, like I said, if uh, um, doing this, like, I found out more about Vanilla Ice than I ever thought I wanted to, and now right. I actually might go listen to his music because of it. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like there's some like good albums out there that it's like, ah, oh, well, he wasn't that famous at that point, so we don't really acknowledge that, you know. Right, but I think yeah. w what you said at the beginning is the best lesson is that, yeah, it was popular back then, and then, like, oh, now I find it is popular, and it's like, oh, no, it's not popular. Listen to what you want, I think, is probably the best lesson that we can oh, give yeah, for this. Yeah, and, yeah, and figure out what, you know, like, what's, what speaks to you, you know? Like, if you want to find other music from the same popular artist, like, go listen to it, you know? Um, yeah. yeah, don't, don't, let, don't let society pressure you into what's what you want to do right just into like oh this is cool go listen to it yeah like you want to listen to Polly shore for 90 minutes listen to Polly shore for 90 minutes i'm not gonna judge you, know, you. probably has some really funny routines too like probably from like the yeah. late 90s or early 2000s like i'm like ooh, does he i mean there has, yeah. there has to be a reason that he like it wasn't just like that joke it had to be more to it so now, now i gotta look this up okay well i mean i'll look this up after we uh after we okay. finish here like <laughs> van it's been God, yeah. I'm I'm so happy that we did yeah. this, and I'm excited for the next time we do this. Yay! Yeah, so that will be hopefully next Friday. That I, I will I will I will be there. All right, sounds good. All right, and we'll figure out all the streaming stuff so that we can let's kind of the yeah. live. Yeah. Let's hope we can do this. All right, yeah. let's see if I can end this well. Uh, okay. well. Have a good night. All right, you too. All right, see ya.